Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Do you know what today is? Today is Pentecost. Most churches do not observe Pentecost. Why? Why don't they observe Pentecost? Did you know that Pentecost was the birthday of the Christian church? The day the Christian church was born, got started, was today. And today is Pentecost. And the question I have for you today is, why should Christians observe Pentecost? Why should they? Well, many Christians observe uh, Easter, and there's nothing in the Bible about observing Easter. And they observe Christmas, and there's nothing in the Bible about observing Christmas. But yet, Pentecost is in the Bible. And uh, it's important. July 4th, 1776 was a birthday. It was the birthday of this nation. And we celebrate the birthday of this nation every single year as big celebrations take place. Why isn't there a big celebration about the start of the Christian church on the day the Christian church was started, was born? Well, my purpose today is to answer these questions. Now, today we have two important booklets that we're offering for free. You can get these booklets. The first is God's Holy Days. Did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation? Did you know that one of God's holy days is Pentecost. And it was called Feast of First Fruits or Feast of Weeks. And the second booklet is called Why Do You Observe Sunday? Most of Christian churches observe Sunday. Yet there's no, uh, there's positively no directive in the Bible saying Christians should observe Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. We're supposed to observe the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. Why? When did it change? What, what caused Christians to observe Sunday when the New Testament church was observing the, the Sabbath? So you could have these two booklets a DVD of this program, if you like, and uh, it's all free. Now, we'll go on to the Bible. Why don't you get your Bible now, get a notebook, get a pen, and be prepared to write down the scriptures because you may want to look them up later on. So we'll get started in Acts chapter 1. So let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1, and we'll look here in verse 1. And it says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, this is the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. Now this 40 days is important. I want you to note that. So he was seen of them 40 days. What were they doing for 40 days? It says right here, and speaking of the things pertaining to, to the kingdom of God. He was explaining them about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, 
commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. Baptized means immersed, immersed. They were immersed in water. But you shall be baptized, that's immersed, with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. And that was 10 days. How do I know that? Well, I'll explain you in a moment why I know that. And you will know it also. So he was seen of them 40 days and he said, stay here in Jerusalem until the promise. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Or are you going to kick out uh, these uh, Romans and uh, restore the kingdom to Israel and rule over us? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. This is important. This is very important we understand this. The Holy Spirit gives power, but you shall receive power. So you're receiving power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Now, we're going to chapter 2. Chapter 2, and I'm going to explain how I know it was 10 days. In chapter 2, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was come, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. This was a, a holy day called Pentecost. It also in Old Testament times was called Feast of Weeks. It was seven weeks made 49 days and you added one more day to make 50. Or it was called the Feast of First Fruits. Now Pentecost means count 50. So we had 40 days that Jesus met with the disciples after his resurrection. We had 10 more days that they were waiting in Jerusalem for this day of Pentecost. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna use the word spirit here. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now this is languages, this is not gibberish. Now the Pentecostals uh, do not celebrate Pentecost. Now isn't that strange? These are people calling themselves Pentecostals, but they don't even celebrate this holy day. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. Here it is, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. What were they doing there? They were keeping this day of Pentecost, this Old Testament holy day, which you can read about in Leviticus chapter 23. They were keeping that day. All of the holy days are listed in Leviticus 23. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were speaking language. They weren't speaking a bunch of gibberish. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, 
are not all these which speak Galileans? These are all fishermen up there from the Galilees, the Galilee Sea. And how do we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea, Cappadocia and Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt. They were speaking Egyptian. <coughs> and in pa the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, they were speaking Latin. Jews and proselytes, those are Gentiles who want to become Jews. Cretes and Arabians, they were speaking Arabic. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and in doubt, saying one to another, what means this? What, what does this all mean? Well, let's go down to verse, chap verse 36 in the same chapter. In verse 36, it says here, Uh, Peter is talking now, and he says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, some of these people may have not been there at the time of the Passover when Jesus Christ was crucified. Why were they accused of crucifying Jesus Christ? Well, did you know that you and I also crucified Jesus Christ because of our sins? He died for your sins and my sins. You held him down, and I pounded the nails into his flesh. We are equally guilty because we sinned. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Are you pricked in your heart when you hear that Jesus Christ died for you that he died in your stead, that he suffered great sufferings, excruciating pain, and finally died for you and me, for your sins and my sins? Are you pricked in your heart? Well, these people were, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Well, what does that actually mean? Repent means feel sorry for the sins you've committed. And go to God and say to God, look, I've sinned. I've, I, please forgive me. I will go and sin no more. And that's what Jesus told uh, a woman caught in adultery. Go and sin no more. And be baptized, every one of you. You see that word baptized, every one of you? I hear ministers, pastors, preachers, teachers on the radio and TV saying you don't have to be baptized. What does God's word say? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you. Why? In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you were not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you need to be baptized again because you need to be baptized in his name, not in any church's name, but his name, for the remission of sins, so the sins might be remiss, so it might go away. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now we're coming right back. Please don't go away. This is important. You need to know about Pentecost. If you're living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here is some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. It only takes a 
speck of blood, and it gives me my results in five seconds. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Get ready, America. The Affordable Health Care Act is here, and it's got everyone asking, how do I find affordable health insurance that's right for me? The answer is simpler than you think. Pick up the phone and call I Can Benefit right now. Waiting for you is a team of licensed insurance agents who understand health care reform and can help you find the right plan to take care of you and your family's health. Don't wait. Call now and get the answers you deserve and a price you'll love. Call toll-free 1-800-426-2163. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Maine, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, it's always a celebration. Hey, don't touch that dial, because you're watching the only independent TV station here in Las Cruces. The Las Cruces Channel. Keep watching. Welcome to back to the program. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and we'll look in verse 7. And here it says, because the carnal mind is enmity. What does that mean? It means hostile. The carnal mind is hostile against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Do you see that? Not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then, they who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, people tell me, Meyer, uh, I don't, the commandments are nailed to the cross. The law is nailed to the cross. I don't have to keep God's commandments. I don't have to keep God's law. You know what I tell them? I tell them, you're carnal. Because right here in verse 7, the carnal mind is hostile against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So, then, they who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So the Spirit of God must dwell inside a, a Christian. Now, we're going to see how important this is. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ... If you don't have the Spirit of Christ or the Spirit of God, he is none of his. That means you are not a Christian. You could say you're a Christian, but you're not. You must have God's Holy Spirit. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Well, what is sin? 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Sin is the transgression of the law. Whoever transgresses the law also sins. So if you break God's law, you're sinning. But the Spirit is life, eternal life, because of righteousness. But look at verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him, that's the Spirit of God, who raised up Jesus from the dead, He resurrected Jesus from the dead. If that Spirit dwells in you, he who raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. Quicken means make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, people think that the spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Now, nothing could be further from the truth because the spirit dwells in us. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And it tells you right here, but if through the Spirit 
you do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. This word Abba is an Aramaic word. And it's one of the very few Aramaic words that you will find in the New Testament. This Abba actually means daddy. The Greeks didn't have a word for daddy. It's closer, closer relationship than a, even a father. It's a daddy. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. What is our spirit? Our spirit is everything that you've ever said, everything you've ever done, everything that you've, uh, that makes you, you. It, it's, it's your, it's your uh, intelligence and, and the things that you said, the things that you did, that we are the children of God. It's a human spirit. So the spirit bears witness with our spirit. And if children, then heirs, heirs of, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may have to suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Glorification is becoming immortal. We become immortal. We can't die. Once we're glorified, we can't die. Wow, this is good news, isn't it? Let's go back to John chapter 15. And Jesus here is speaking in John chapter 15. And he says in verse 26, John 15, verse 26. But the Comforter. So Christ calls the Holy Spirit the Comforter. Some, something that comforts. Which is the Holy Spirit? Whom the Father will send in my name. And it uses an English pronoun. He shall teach you all things. So this Holy Spirit, whatever it is, is going to teach us all things. And that's where people go off the wall because they believe this pronoun, he, makes the Holy Spirit the third person of the Trinity. Now, nowhere does it say in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. This word, this word, pronoun, he, it's the same as in Spanish or uh, French or Italian, uh, all inanimate objects carry a male or female pronoun. For instance, uh, in Spanish, the hat, el sombrero, the table, la mesa. It, it has male and female uh, pronouns for every inanimate object. So this he should actually, in English, be it, I-T. It shall teach you all things. Now, you, you might say, well, wait a minute. If, if the Holy Spirit's a teacher, it has to be, it has to be a, a person. Well, you could sit in front of the TV set and be taught, can't you? You're watching the TV set. You could pick up a book and read a book, and the book could teach you things, couldn't it? So... There are other ways of teaching except through a human being. So <clears throat> it shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So that's verse 26. Let's go to John 16. John 15. Well, we were there. John 16, verse 7. John 16, verse 7. Okay, let's go there, and here we are. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you, to, for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. So the Holy Spirit comes unto us and dwells within us. <clears throat> 
But if I depart, I will send him, it should be it, unto you. And when it is come, it will approve the world of sin and of righteousness, of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment, because the prince, that's, that's Satan, of this world is judged. Now, we're going to look at verse 13. How be it, when it, should be it, the spirit of truth is come, it will guide you into all truth, for it shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever it shall hear, that shall it speak, and it will show you things to come. It shall glorify me, for it shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Now, I want you to see this as a check here <clears throat> for $10,000. You see this check for $10,000? Okay, $10,000, this check. I will sign this check and put your name on it, pay to the order of your name. All you need to do is bring to the studio your King James Bible or your new King James Bible and show me conclusive proof. I want to see conclusive proof that the Holy Spirit is a person, is the third person of the Trinity. Now, if you do that, if you find that, your King James, your new King James Bible, rush down here to the studio and bring your Bible, show it to me, walk away with this check for $10,000. It's all yours. Okay. Now, we, we are holding Pentecost Sunday service. Now, on Saturday, we'll be at 1 o'clock at our meeting room at 1701 East Missouri, and we have an interactive Bible study that you're welcome to join. Now, today is Pentecost Sunday. We'll be meeting at the new hospital, the Mountain View Hospital, in the meeting room as you come in the entrance to the hospital, the main entrance, on the right-hand side, you go to the right, the first large room is the meeting room. We'll be meeting there at 12 o'clock. Why don't you come? We have something for you to eat. You can eat with us, and uh, you can have something to eat, bring your Bible, bring your questions. We'd be happy to answer those questions. And by the way, if any of you find uh, the third person of the Trinity, uh, bring it. We'll give you the check for $10,000. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.